All right. Welcome, everyone. My name is Brendan Bardick with Brendan Bardick Real Estate Coaching, and we are extremely excited that we have David Tam with us today. And David Tam has been working with myself, my organization, our real estate team, so many of the real estate agents I, I personally coach, and helping us take our tech into the future and basically give us the best return on investment. So um, we, we implore his company to give us the best strategies, techniques to dominate the, the digital space. So we're gonna have a lot of fun today. We're going to talk about how to optimize your website. We're going to talk about a uh, way to process internet leads faster, smarter, better. We're going to talk about how to generate re uh, reviews and how to do a lot of fun things in that category. Uh, and we're going to talk about how paid leads are, are changing and, and how this whole environment is going to be very, very different as always, as we move into the future. So David, thank you so much for joining us. If you could just share a little bit about yourself, uh, who you are, and then we'll, we'll hop into some conversation. Yeah, man, absolutely. Thank you for having me. It's a freaking honor to be on a podcast with you, man. And for your audience as well. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is David Tam, a Colorado native. And uh, my goodness, I started in the restaurant world. Nobody cares about all that crap. Joined the Air Force, uh, did about nine and a half years, in various theaters. And at that point, when I was like separating is when I fell completely in love with marketing and technology. Um, so we ended up starting one of the largest real estate CRMs in the country, Firepoint Solutions. Um, that got acquired, uh, started Cash Services. So we are a, a bespoke um, digital services firm, firm. We really focus on like research and development, um, white papers, and then providing technology and solutions based off that research, not just what looks pretty, right? Um, so it's, it's purpose driven. Uh, then my brother runs a, a joint venture a financial firm, mortgage insurance, a bunch of solutions there. And then we've got our hands in a bunch of other projects uh, in the real estate space. So that's a little bit on me. I don't have any kids. I got a fat corgi running around here somewhere. So if you hear her barking, just uh, forgive me. <laughs> so that's me, Brendan. No, no, I appreciate it. And yeah, so, well, we're going to use your time because it's valuable. And I want to make sure our, our viewers and listeners understand what what's going on right now in the real estate agent tech realm. And so I, I started out with a couple of questions here. And I think this, this first one is pretty interesting. Uh, I know our premise of this uh, episode is to talk about optimization of website. And even before we jumped on here, uh, David, I was talking to Anna and I said, you know, what's fascinating to me is there's not a lot of agents that even have their own website, right? There, there are a lot of agents. And when I say their own, right? So we, I think we're in an interesting time right now where you have your company's website. So whether you're, you know, whatever, you know, flag you're, you're flying, you have that type of, of site. You then we know kind of who the big players are, right? You've got your boom towns, your real geeks, your um, I don't even know what it, whatever comes off of that. But yeah. you've got these other platforms that you're individualizing to be your own, and but you don't own them, right? right. You don't you don't own any of that. Uh, they, so so that's also an interesting piece. So for for those that and i want to frame this in two aspects one of the questions i get from most of our coaching clients is do i need my own website even in this day and age do i need my own website well it's a loaded question right yeah. <laughs> um, that's what i do well yeah i know <laughs> you have to ask yourself well do you want to be in business in 5 years is the counter to that question right if not then yeah, maybe you don't need your own website. But if you think you want to be in business in five years and still relevant in the real estate space, you're going to need some sort of digital credibility that is your own, right? And, and one of the really cool things that one of the projects I've been working on, Brendan, over the last couple of years is actually building a monetization model for an asset like a website, right? Like when, when Barbara Corcoran sold her company for 60 plus million dollars, the traffic that was going to her website, i.e. the revenue stream from the leads that it captured, the GCI it created, was an, was an item on the balance sheet, right? On her, it was, it's on her P&Ls. And that's where a lot of people, I don't think, realize or understand that you've got this potential multi-million dollar asset just sitting right underneath your nose, um, yet you don't own it. And, right. it, it so, and so you're, and you're paying all of this money for marketing and generating. And if you ever want to leave, good luck to you. That URL probably doesn't belong to you. And if it does, that site's not going to belong to you. And if it does, that traffic probably isn't going to belong to you. 
right? So you're, you're absolutely right. And because of some of the advent of new technology in the real estate space, that doesn't mean, oh gosh, I've got to go spend $25,000 on a custom website. I mean, there's squeeze page options out there, you know, that are extremely cost effective at building your digital brand in your storefront, capture traffic and leads. So long answer to a short question. Yes, it's incredibly important. Do you so, want to go down that rabbit hole of, of best practices there? Well, I just want to come back first of all, because some of our listeners may not know what a squeeze page is. So let's, let's define just because there's, I think for, for a lot of us, and again, not of us, not a lot of us live in this every single day for some of our listeners out there, you have a bolt on platform website. Mm -hmm. You can have your individual website, meaning like you said, spend 25 K create it from scratch. You own the, the, the mo you own it more or less, right? I mean, you own it. And then you have a squeeze page or what I just call them landing pages, but I think that we're talking the same thing, just a landing page that has a specific purpose that it's trying to accomplish. Yeah. Is that the three options or is there any more than that, that I'm, that I'm not getting out to everyone? You know, there's integrated and there's hybrid options as well, but you're right. So let's, let's just call it what it is, a CRM site. And guys, like I'm going in this, I don't have a dog in the fight. Like whatever CRM you choose, great. CRMs, a lot of them do, they're doing God's work. They're doing amazing things in the space. Some of them are bad actors, right? We're not going to focus on that. But really at the end of the day, it's, I've got a CRM site and it's typically canned. They're not built to perform. I we do hundreds of web audits. We look at websites, the internal nuts and bolts of performance of how fast they load, load and how they convert and how customizable they are. Most of them are not, right? Because they're built on desktop. They don't convert organic traffic to lead very well. And so it's not a great- And, and, the, and the load speed, which is what one of our problems is, right? That you told yeah. us, right? Our load yeah. speed is affecting our ability for Google to take us seriously. Right, right. Due to the core web vitals update that happened, gosh, we're what, like nine months ago now or something like that. You got to be at 2.5 seconds or faster for your load speed. And so I, let's hold, hold on. Just, just yeah. let's dumb that down for a second right? sure, because sure. people are like, whatever we just said in those last 30 seconds are like, you're what and you're who and how. So I, load, I, load speed just means right when someone Googles my website or they click on my email signature, perhaps, or whatever it is to go to my website the the quickness of because all of us want these uh, real estate right we want all these cool images right like like these amazing you know you know lands you know aerials and all of this stuff because we thought our clients will think we're cool but is that that's not helping us is it let's let's go down that rabbit hole and by the way we're <laughs> gonna have to do another one of these friends. yeah i already love doing this with you well people need to understand i mean it's a lot and you live in it but i mean i talk to everyone every day and they're like my what speed and i'm like your load speed and they're like uh-huh so yeah yeah just but go ahead yeah no I, it, it's great it's great so one of the crown jewel factors that impact your user experience on your website. And that's what the Google algorithm cares about is the user experience. The old algorithm just cared at, it was a kind of a blind robot. It would just go in and look at data and say, you made the cut, great. Now the algorithm is actually a robotic human AI crawler. It will go in and play with your site, spend time on your site, share your site, see how it works going in and out of the site. And it does all that a thousand times faster than you can think. Well, so that word you used, user experience, I think yeah. is, if, if we just probably put that on the wall in front of us, right? For all of us agents going, does our website provide an ex excellent user experience? What does that mean? Well, it, well, the answer is for about 98% of the CRM websites out there, the answer is no. They're too slow, they're built on desktop, and they don't have what we call in the industry conversion elements. These are, these are table stakes items that need to be present on your site to have the highest probability of converting organic traffic and paid traffic into an actual lead, right? And so let's, I'm gonna, let's go back in time, okay? Let's look at when, when real estate websites first started coming onto the market, we had Zillow and we had you know, the big box players and Redfin was starting to poke up and their first CRM started to pop out, this, the Boomtowns and the Commissions Inc. And, and all of these, and they were doing phenomenal things. They were you know, movers and shakers, but what I don't think they sh didn't do was a tremendous amount of consumer behavior research when building those platforms, because it appears on a surface level that those CRMs emulated what the billion dollar companies were doing, i.e. providing only browse MLS, search for homes in. Yeah, they, they built them, they built them to make them pretty to sell them to 
agents. Right. However, they don't convert entirely well. When we look right. at, by the way, I, I got invited out to go sit at Google headquarters at their data center and talk about UI UX, especially in the real estate space in a think tank for this very purpose, right? Like I, I've, I've seen behind the curtain. And when we're talking about conversion rates when, when, on a website, you know, organic traffic should be turning into a lead about 0.5 to 2.5% of the time, right? So if you've got a hundred leads or a hundred organic traffic visits a month, you should be generating a couple of leads a month from that. If you've got a fast website with all the conversion elements that I'm going to talk about here in a moment. In the real estate space, what that is on most CRM sites is a, a buyer focus. That's not what the consumer is looking for. And I can prove this because we have a white paper on it where we analyzed 15,000 data points across 30 different markets. And what we found is when, when people are looking to browse for homes, they don't care about the individual agent. They've been conditioned over the last decade to go to Redfin and Trulia and Zillow, and Realtor.com, and all the big box players that are dominating page one and two with buyer-focused content and sites. And so we're literally stepping in the ring with Mike Tyson, wondering why aren't we winning? <laughs> like, sure. You're going at the wrong direction. So what we did is we did an A-B analysis and we actually took a guy's website. We burned it to the ground, said website's gone. And we built a website that didn't even have the MLS browsing functionality. It was 100% seller focus. Get your home sold faster for more money. Conversion elements, like what I was talking about. Clickable phone number above the fold. Actually list the phone number out, right? Because you're going to be reading it when you're sitting in a red light to the person in the passenger seat. You're going to be grabbing a coffee. You're not going right. to- So much of this is mobile now. And right. it's like, yeah, you know, when we pull up even our website, sometimes I was like, this looks ridiculous. This is not working on mobile. And that's where our, where- 90% of the, the people are starting to, to look. They're not sitting at their computer at night looking at houses. They're going, I'm in my car. I want to see this house right now. And does this thing function and work fast enough? And we hear the feedback all the time, not just for me, but from the outside world going, I just like how Zillow works. Yes. Right. I just like how that works. And so we go, we'll use ours. And they're like, yeah, not just ours. I'm talking all agents that I know. And they're like, eh. It's just better. It's just it's a better user experience. Sure. And I, I tip of the hat to Zillow. Listen, yeah. I, I don't. I'm, I'm sure they don't like me because I'm talking about some of the stuff. You know, the data underneath. But truly, they they dominate the market because they meet the consumer where they are. You know, if I hand you, you know, Brendan, if I hand you the keys to a Rolls Royce and a Toyota Camry, which one are you going to drive? Right. Well, they're the, they're the same thing. They're an internal combustion engine. But if I hand you a keys to a Tesla, wow, this is something different that I might be looking for that's not those other two. That's what we're talking about, consumer behavior research. This is marketing 101. And if we were to offer the consumer what they're looking for, i.e., if I'm looking to sell my home, get my home sold faster for more money, that should be on your website above the fold with a very right. strong value proposition or call to action that is centered around that seller focus, not browse MLS in, or we can sell your home. Well, I like what your company does is, is we think about it in our world, we call it vital signs. And so you're looking at it and a lot of people don't even know what above the fold means. It just means like what is seen when you are land on a website in that first second. And so, like you said, if you don't have a phone, these call to actions that are simple, we take them for granted. And like I said, we have this mansion estate video playing that shows this beautiful thing and it looks cool, but it does nothing to help us grow our real estate business. So, so I know we can go way down this rabbit hole. Here's a simple question that I wrote down that I know I get asked all the time. So, so David, if I just said, you know what, David, I want to step my game up and head into the future. And I've got Let's make it simple. I have $5,000 in my pocket. I just had a big closing. I got five G's yeah. feeling good. I got five G's extra. Cause obviously hopefully they're saving and doing all the right things, but I've got this five grand to spend on advancing my business. What, if you could go back and just tell me right now, me as a, an agent, what would you do? And let's say I was just using my company's website, my, or an, a, a, a box website. Yes. What would I, what should I do with that five grand? I'll tell you what not to do first. Okay, okay. So perfect. Do not go spend that on paid leads. Ooh, like, this right? is a good one. Ooh. Yeah, right. Because so many people are like, "Oh, I, I just, I, it's, it's. I hate to say it, but it's like a drug addiction." Um, it is. I, I say it every day. Throw quarters in the slot. Quick machine, fix. Hoping that I get a good lead. When guys, you can take a step back, stop, 
invest in your digital presence organically and create long-term organic lead flow over time, right? And that you can do SEO, you can get a custom site, you can do all of these things. I would start with your Google business profile, your Google business listing. That costs none dollars, Perfect. right? Go yep. in and, and audit yourself, search yourself, look for your business, your URL, and then check out your Google business listing. And do I have all of the mandatory items and, and are the citations and everything that is required in there, right? Is my logo correct? Does my website link go to the right place? Reviews, we'll talk about that a little bit later today. Just yeah, my agents, my agents are so tired of me yelling about Google business page at, at nauseum, right? Where I'm just, and there's always, and, and I, and I, I love this. Some of them are like, well, there's something wrong with my name. Google is locked it. I have this. And I said, spend it eight hours on the phone with them until you figure it out. Yep. There's, there's nothing more important than this. Yep. Think about it. It's, it's the number one place. Think about how many times we use it a day. And then it's so funny that I'm like, that's your first impression you're not going to try to dominate your own name or your own space. Now, of course, and, and to everyone that's with a company or a team, leverage all of those pieces, your name, the team and the company. So you get all that juice, right? That's, that's what I try to explain to everyone. I go, I go, we're all just trying to piggyback off of someone until we're important enough to where it doesn't matter anymore, which is probably never, but we got to squeeze all of it out. Totally. And there, there's nothing wrong with that. People feel like that that's like, oh, I'm going against my company because I'm trying to build my own sphere. No, no that's not. No. It's, it's about yeah. the consumer. Are you the professional agent that is going to white glove that customer experience and make sure they really do get their home sold faster for more money or find the home of their dreams? If you're doing that, the rest will work itself out. But I, I feel like you're right. People are looking at the problem the wrong way. So I would say to answer your question in a really long-winded manner, Fix your Google business listing, your Google business profile. Okay. And, and should I spend, should I hire anybody? Should I spend any money to do that? Or is that just me dedication to task? Uh, it depends on your bandwidth and the ability of, you know, access to virtual assistants. I mean, okay. there, you could get a, a good GMB qualified VA, Google My Business qualified virtual assistant on mm. Upwork or Fiverr for, I don't know, I, I've got a, a guy in the Ukraine that does like random programming work for me. He's got a master's in computer science. He runs the petroleum industry for the country and he's $22 an hour. Yeah. That's a, that's a fire nugget right there. <laughs> Google my business, virtual assistant, everyone that's listening do that ASAP. Yeah. I think that's huge. Right. Right. Uh, and then after that, it's, I, I would start to look at where do you want to be in the next 12 months, 24 months, five years from a digital perspective. And if you're like, ah, man, I'm, I'm a company man. I'm totally good staying with my brokerage site and keeping my CRM and I'm, I'm good to go. Don't worry about it. Just understand that there's going to be some tectonic movement coming down in the next two to three years and already is with respect to your ability to capture leads and own a relationship, right? There's, there's more money pouring into the real estate technology space than any other industry in the history of the country. And I think, Brendan, a lot of people don't realize we're the largest segment of the U.S. economy. We are bigger than national defense spending by a lot, right? Ergo, you're the largest segment of the global economy right here, right now, this podcast. So you have to make a decision. What, where do I want to be over the next 12 months, 24 months, 36 months? And if it were me, I would say, I want to be able to swim on my own. I want to be able to have a website that I own the URL. I own the traffic that comes there. More importantly, I own the relationships from the leads. Because this is, a, this is a, a methodology thing that you have to understand. When you are, let's say you're on Zillaflex or you're, you're renting leads from another big player, okay? You don't control the relationship. You never will. That's by design, right? So on, on NAR says, and I just pulled up the NAR statistics from last November when you were saying the website, yeah, there, there's about 20% of real estate agents that don't even have a website. Right, right. What? Yeah, right. <laughs> right? Okay, so, so when we're talking about the relationship, Average is somebody's going to do five, a consumer, right? A buyer or seller in their life cycle, they're going to do five to seven transactions, right? I know you have a massive PCSOI business, right? You get a ton of repeat business of, Hey, we bought a home from you five years ago. We're ready to upgrade. We're one investment property. Like that's normal because you're a badass. You do a great job and you're going to serve your consumer as well. So you own that relationship in those next five to seven transactions. When you have well, 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 I'm renting that relationship if somebody with more money, bigger pockets doesn't steal it from me that has better tech. This is very true. And so, I, 
uh, to be totally blunt, that's where, <laughs> how we're positioning you. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Exactly. So you can just soda straw up all of those transactions because you just outrank them organically for all the terms that the consumer cares about. And you're able to stick your finger in the dominoes and say mine, right? Because, and then provide a better job, do a better job of serving that client. And then of course we can get into the retargeting strategies and all that. Stay in front so of let's, let, let's go back to the five grand then. Let's sure. say that I am with big box company or, or team, then would the, the gauge go and go, look, I'm not quite ready to, to, to just drop the money to do this. Yeah. Would you go, would you go keep that and create squeeze page or what we call a, a, a landing page, or I call it a stealth page, more or less a targeted page, like, um, sell your home in 60 days or I'll buy it. Sure. Or what's your home worth, you know, and, and, and have a whole page that's just dedicated towards one simple action, which is to get some provide value to someone, which I think people still don't understand. And then for, for that exchange, for you to, to get their information yeah. so that you can nurture them, follow up with them, and hopefully do business with them someday. Uh, we need to be careful about marketing strategies in the real estate space when it comes to the digital implementation. The reason I say that is you've got listeners all over the country and every market's different, right? Every market behaves a little bit differently because of the size of the market, demographics of the market, as well as the competitive environment of the market. Ergo, why I can generate buyer leads for $5 in one market and $600 in another. And, and different strategies are going to fit those different markets because of those dynamic factors. So I think that is one strategy of, and, and, and when we talk about marketing in the real estate space from a digital perspective, it's omni-channel. It's, I need to look at all of the options. And then I need to determine what is the best fit for where I want to go in the next 12 months. And I'm just going to, I'm going to rattle off a, a really big list here real quick, Brendan. It's, uh, you've got, you've got a, a website, right? Buyer or seller, custom or not. You've got lead generation, Facebook, Google, LinkedIn. You've got retargeting and remarketing. You've got digital radio, connected TV. You've got terrestrial radio and regular TV. You've got AI-driven SEO and regular SEO. These are all options in the marketing suite that any CMO, it's like, I should know them like my kids' names, right? And, and so when we talk about solutions for that $5,000, yes, you can. You can do a squeeze page or a landing page. What you've got to be careful of is what is that landing page built on? Because if we're going to a solution like Unbounce, where it is a kind of box solution or like Squarespace, that's not going to have the long-term indexing capability if you ever wanted to do high-level search engine optimization or organic content onto that site to rank well, because they're slower sites that don't have those metadata capabilities. Meaning at the end of the day, Blue Sky World, you want a WordPress site that you own the URL and you're in control of. Sure, you can pay somebody to manage it for you. That's totally acceptable, right? But you need to make sure in the contract that that is your property. Because, I mean, we're talking millions of dollars here. Like we, I did a, 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 an ROI equation on a website um, for some people up in the Chicago area. Their site makes them $800,000 of profit a year, a year, just from the lead flow in organic. Right. That's yeah. a massive asset. You put a multiplier behind that, you're retired. Well, that's what like Boomtown has created. They've created their own lead gen system inside their thing that they're shelling out and charging a premium for. And it's brilliant and shout out to, to them for being yeah, smart. Yeah, yeah. But again, you're paying for convenience, which I think as we've learned, most agents will pay for convenience. So I think when I, when I frame this, David, the last 15 things you said, I know there's a few techie people out there. They're going to understand any of that. So let's, and I'm, I'm just a simple man and I know uh, I, I'm maybe so, too simple sometimes, but I've got five grand. What yeah. do I do? I would go, I would start to look at a, a custom website solution. And I mean, there's really, really high end custom website solutions, okay. $5,000. I don't know. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Right. Cause that way I'm building my restaurant and I own that restaurant front and no one can take that restaurant from me. Right. And, and what you have to understand is well, what are consumers doing today? And when they go to a website is people typically don't register on just one website, right? A lot of, this is a misnomer. It, research shows if somebody is ready to do a transaction to buy or sell a home, they're going to register on four to six websites in a 30 day period because they're ready to do business. And then they're, Hey, who's going to reach out to me in a respectful manner and follow up. And then who's a good fit, right? Like this six foot, you know, bald, intimidating white guy might be not be the guy for me. Maybe I want to, you know, work shocking. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And so, and so like, um, that, when we can provide them with a storefront that's an elegant experience that's different, 
that loads fast, that has all of those conversion elements to make my life easy, I want to hit the easy button and fill my information out in a lead form above the fold. I want to know what makes you different right there on the site before I have to scroll. I want a phone number listed where I can just fat finger in the numbers and call you without having to hunt. Then, then this, yeah, then this, ahead. well, then this common sense piece. So I just want to make sure everyone heard and, and clear on this. Then, you know, you're hearing it from one of the smartest people, if not one of the smartest person I know in the business. And when we're talking about this, he's saying you have to, to get a custom website. If you had that five grand, or so. you don't have to, it would make a big difference in doing this. Now, in doing that, I've built a lot of websites in my day. I mean, I've had, you know, WordPress ones, all of this. It's a nightmare. It's absolutely, I would rather have all my teeth pulled out than have to go through this process. Why is it so hard? Why hasn't someone figured out how to make this easier or have they? And how do I know I'm not going to waste all this time and get screwed? Yeah. Um, so yes, there are, that used to be how it was. You yeah, it was like the wild west. It was like, it was so bizarre. Well, we're, we are the last, because we are a unicorn of an industry. We are also the last unrefined industry in the United States. Every, every other industry has accelerated beyond real estate. And there is, there's a calling. There's going to be a consolidation through that influx of trillions of dollars of capital into the space. And we're already seeing it happen, right? There's, there's more acquisitions happening in this space than any other industry in the country right now. And we're, we're in the thick of it. So it used to be real messy. You know, there's a lot of things that used to be real messy, right? But that are now a lot better because of technology. So no, I mean, when we're talking about a custom website, there's a lot of great providers out there. We build custom websites for some of our clients. We, it's got to be a good fit if we're working to work with, but yeah, $5,500, six week build time. This is exactly what we need. This is exactly what you're going to get at the end of the day. We hand you the keys and we'll run it for you. And then the second piece to that, so that's very helpful. So we'll, of course, you know, share your information with everyone so they can understand that piece. Then the second thing I hear from all the, the agents I work with across the country is, well, the website's great, but I really like the CRM of yes. Ch Chime or Follow Up Boss. Or, I mean, I know teams that right now that are using a real estate platform, a CRM platform, and then another platform like Sisu to track accountability and and you know you know all of my stats and my stuff and and you know make sure I'm doing the right things my contacts my conversion ratios all of that and I'm, and I'm I'm waiting for the day when all three of these combine together and create this super planet but even your what you're saying is even if they did though that's what they're selling to you because that's the convenience am I smarter to get a custom website how do I deal with the once, once somebody registers that says, hi, I want to see a, a listing at, on your website, what, what does that go to? Or do you build that custom solution as well? Yeah, totally. Well, we, we did, right? So we built FirePoint um, as a CRM to be, you know, focused really on the lead follow-up and the technology, right? And so- Which is everything. Well, it, it really, it's, it's, it's a lot of everything. Yeah, for sure. And if there's, we'll go down that rabbit hole another, maybe on version two of the podcast. Sure, right? sure. So, but when we're talking about um, the technology stack, I mean, I, I was on the phone yesterday. He's got 13 different systems, right? So he's got Sierra, follow-up boss, C2. Yeah. He's got yeah. a second CRM for different lead types. He's got two squeeze pages. Structurally. In I mean, it's, <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's a little overkill, but um, in, let's simplify. You've got a CRM where your leads are being managed. That's one part of the battle to make sure I'm, my leads are getting followed up with call, text, email, save search and drip campaign according to the plan every single time, right? And if not, then we got to fix that. Otherwise we're just pouring gasoline into you know, a car that's got a hole in the bottom of the gas tank. It, it's, it's dumb. So you got to fix that in parallel with what we're doing with the front end website. So in a perfect world, you create a seller focused custom website that loads fast, has all of the conversion elements. And over time, you're going to rank for things that people are actually searching for not what some CRM is telling you that they're looking for so they can take your money, right? Probably a polarizing content, but let's just be a <laughs> comment. But well, like you just said, and I think a key piece there is seller focused, Yeah. right? Most websites are designed to produce buyer registrations. Which is wrong. Which is wrong. Which is wrong, yeah. right? Yeah. Is, yeah. It, so, and again, guys, take, get a second opinion. I am, <laughs> I'm very opinionated when it comes to this stuff because I'm in it every single day. Go test it out yourself. 
A-B test content on your website, change it from 100% buyer to 100% seller and see what happens. In our experience, conversion rate increases between four and 460%. Amazing. Bye. Okay. I love it. Right. And, and, and just real quick, because we did get a, a, a question in the chat box. So, uh, and we'll come back to this because I'm putting a pin in this because I do want to come back to it. So it said on a team, should every agent have their own Google business page? Why or why not? And I think we addressed that. Uh, I'll, I'll let you answer that, but go yeah. ahead. Great for question. Let's go back to the, the, the other piece really quick though. So what happens there is there's a bunch of different plugins that, you know, uh, gravity forms and capture forms that are, that are, that you can just bolt on your website where name, email, phone number, you don't need a message, right? Let's talk about number of fields. How many CRMs have seven fields in the contact form? You have to go to a second page to even find it. Wrong. They need the path of least resistance, right? right. So we then capture that information and we route it through Zapier or any other lead routing tool straight into your CRM. So within 30 seconds, that lead appears, you get a notification. Hey, new lead from organic site, seller focus, give them a call. Simple as that. Well, and that's the piece. And so what I heard today, which I thought was fascinating was, um, it, I think it was five years ago, it took three minutes to check out when you were buying something like three minutes, <laughs> yeah. right. To go through a whole checkout process. If you were buying like socks online or something like that. Yeah. And I don't know if real estate's caught up to that. We're still thinking in this old school world of engagement where it's, Hey, you know, you, you come on my site, you're going to give me your name, your email, your phone number, you're going to do all of this. And, and then I hear the same thing all the time, David is, Oh, internet leads suck. Oh, I just, <laughs> Oh, these internet leads, right? I mean, I mean, we have we have a CRM with thirty seven thousand leads in it, thirty seven thousand, you know. And I I run audits on it and look at all the stats and all this traffic of people coming to our site. Well, well, to a real geeks built on platform site, and and I'll speak to the reason in, in a lot of this why we're in this, right? Is I think some of us are going like myself we're deep in this CRM, right? We're deep in it. And we mean, you've had this conversation. It's like, how do I make that transition if I'm at that stage, which, which we, we can talk about, that's probably not the, the majority of, uh, of everyone on here. But if, if we're going back and sorting this out, so to just make sure I'm clear, if I buy a website through your company or, or, or other, prefer, yeah, prefer, preferably yours, then, uh, you're going to bolt on the Firepoint system and then I pay a monthly fee to service that? Is that how that works? Just to make sure I'm clear? Yeah, or, yeah. or what do I do to solve my CRM issue? Because when I say CRM, and I think for, for everyone out there, what, what I'm talking about is text campaigns, tech uh, workflows. Does it sync with my dialer, Mojo or Vulcan 7 or Red X? Does it, does, it, does it engage with everything? Do my Zillow leads come directly into it or my realtor.com leads import into it? Everything is in that, that synchronization because that's the big piece of this, right? Is if it's, if it's not all jiving with each other or syncing up with each other, everyone has the same complaint. I have to go from here to do this, to do that. And with us as humans, every last little more connection that happens is a 90% chance that I'm not going to do it. Okay. And then if I don't do it, then I bought this thing for nothing and it's worthless. Which is, which is why automation in that CRM space is so empirically important, which we'll talk about another time. But so, so best case scenario, it's an order of operations problem, right? So typically what happens is I start, I get CRM because I need website. Website doesn't work. Internet leads are no good. What do I do? Yes. Well, and, that, and that's probably what, 75% of real estate agents today? Easily, if not more. Well, it, we got to make sure that we're still following up with the leads that are in the CRM, but you, what we would do is we would bolt on a custom website solution to fix the problem at current state of, I only have a buyer focused website that's slow and it doesn't convert traffic and I don't get leads and it's not indexing for anything. Listen, guys, if all of the CRMs created really sexy, fast running seller focused websites with high level of customizability, I would, I would spend most of my time somewhere else. Sure. But I have to do this because... They're, they're not keeping pace with the market. And I hate it because I want to focus on crazy high-level AI technology and programmatic stuff, but I can't because right. this is what's needed in the industry. And so um, like, that's my secret sauce, guys. <laughs> if you, if you want, right? And so, but, but there's, it's such a big industry that that's a Herculean task for one entity to undertake, which is why we're so very open with our data and our research and our findings. I'm literally handing it to people on a silver platter, fix it, right? So in that situation, yeah, you've got your CRM. Look at some seller-focused options, right? And if, again, you don't, don't 
think that we're the end all be all. We are one option. Go, go get a second and third opinion, go to Fiverr, go to Upwork, right? But just make sure at the end of the day, you control the URL, you control the site and you control what's happening for the management and maintenance of that site. Because a lot of the CRMs, it's like, you don't own anything. You want to leave your death sentence, man. Well, and that's the question I also am still getting. Does my domain name matter? Yes. Okay. So when we say domain, we're talking the bardic group.com, right? Mm -hmm. And when I'm asking, does domain name matter? Cause I get this question all the time. I, I have, I have agents that I coach that, that have their name, uh, .com. They have four, they have four different domains because again, they got sold on different things along the way. And they're yeah. like, if I blew it all up, which one should I go with? Yeah. Can, what, what, what would you do if, if to answer that question, right? Like it is, the Bardic Group, it's not a house, I mean, I think it's a household name, but you know what I mean? Like, do I change it to coloradohomesearch.com? Like, or what would help me in doing this if I were to relaunch it or anyone else out there? Yeah, so before you make any decisions, you've got to do a little bit of research. And some things that you want to look at are my current domains. Let's say, for instance, I mean, I'm not even kidding you. I, we have clients that have over 10 domains, active domains. Yeah. With yeah. different sites that are linked and talking to each other. I mean, it's a bowl of spaghetti from a digital perspective. And so what you've got to do is look at the domain authority score. So, and there's guys, Google developer tools, GT metrics, SEM rush. You can get a 30 day free trial on there. These are all tools that you can look at your website. You want to look at your authority score. So how much authority score does Google give, i.e. one through 100, um, that current domain? Um, because that's, that is an indicator, one of the indicators of how much money that site can potentially make you by converting traffic to lead, right? And that's usually that, that path of, of revenue. Um, and it can be paid as well. It doesn't have to necessarily be organic. The other one is how much traffic do I have coming to my site, right? Paid and unpaid. If you've got a, a domain name that's got a thousand people a month coming to it, searching on their own behavior organically and coming to your site, that's a really good opportunity to keep that and redirect others in or cannibalize others and do a site 301 redirect, which is essentially, I'm just taking the stuff there and then I'm putting it here, right? You can do all of these things in the digital space fairly easily with a qualified developer. So you wanna look at your traffic, your authority score, but also your curb appeal. Does the actual URL make intuitive sense? And what Google looks at with their, their latest AI crawler is, am I bait and switching someone, mm, right? right. If it's, it's, okay, it's totally okay to have your name and it be a real estate website. What you don't want to have is, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to give you a bunch of bad examples, but you need to make sure there's parity there between what you're offering on the site and the domain itself. And that impacts what's called your QS, your quality, quality score, which also impacts your, your cost per lead if you're doing paid leads. Like it's all connected. It's all connected. Yeah. So it's not a one stop. So it's research, of course. Mm -hmm. Having someone that can advise and guide you through this, because it sounds like everything you just listed again, none of us are going to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah. we need to have someone do this for us and then make that decision. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. And, and there, but there's, uh, Brendan, I have to, I have to say this. There's always more than one option, just sure. in life. We can choose to do anything we want. Right. And sometimes we don't know what the consequences are going to be. What do we do in those instances? We lean on our brothers and sisters left and right and say, what, what should we do? You know what I mean? So get consult somebody well, that's a subject matter expert. Yeah. When, well, when we look at like a Redfin, right? Like that name makes no sense, but I have clients that will not stop using their site, right? Well, so I'm sure they're not getting organic uh, authority off of that name. They are now, but when they started it, but the way that they became successful is that they continue to index every single listing, correct? That, that was that. And- Two things. So okay. actually, I wrote a book on this subject. Yeah. So let's go for real estate agent in a hurry. That actually tells you how to beat Zillow and Redfin organically for anything. Sure. You want. Literally, it's the playbook. You can find it on our website if you want free. I'll just give you the first free chapter. Please. It will be complete, I guarantee. But it's highly technical, right? Love it. Uh, so, but yes, they, they index for individual properties. They also index for communities, right? So geographically, we're going after. But you have to, from a marketing perspective, um, the name itself is substantiated by the brand and what the company does, not the other way around. If you, if I could erase your memory, you know, men in black, red dot you, whatever, and say, what is Nike? And show you the swoosh, you would think it's a, you know, an airline company or something or sure. food services. You would have no idea to make tennis shoes. Why? But, and that logo was done by, you know, a grad student and a competition. It was the product and services that got behind the name that built the name to be what it is, which over time has its own authority. So don't think that domain, people think, oh, the domain name is going to make or break my business. Eh, it 
It can, but there's a many, many other factors that we can dial in to, to move the needle to where, I mean, yeah, it could help optimize. I don't know if it would necessarily break right uh, in certain instances. So it could always get an improvement. So just because I want to make sure we get this in on our time, because um, wow. you know, you know, that helped a ton. So first, thank you. Uh, sure. then let's, let's go to, uh, reviews. Um, cause, cause I know we've made a big, uh, push to do this. I've been preaching about reviews for so long. So, so talk to me about getting more reviews, the importance of reviews. Let's talk reviews. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna qualify this. I'm I'm very opinionated when it comes to the review piece. I'm, I'm 180 pages deep into a book on the subject, feedback cultivation for real estate agents, right? And so, how people ask for reviews in the real estate space is exactly how you shouldn't normally, right? And when this goes all the way back to human psychology, and and so and that's what a big piece of marketing is, right? The best marketers in the world understand high level business acumen and human psychology and the intersection of those two points are the best marketers of the world that I aspire to be one day, right? And so the, as we walk into this conversation, one of the things you have to ask yourself is if I were to save up my entire life to put a half a million dollars in the bank so that I could do business with someone and then they ask me for a review like I bought a pair of tube socks on Amazon, they're spitting in my face, right? Like your clientele, this is the largest purchase they're ever going to make in their life. And I get emotional when I talk about this. I literally broke out in tears giving this talk and on a stage because it's that big of a deal of you need to honor your clients because they saved up their entire life to do business with you. And so what we do is we try to capitalize on those points of maximum excitement during the transaction, not at the very end when they know it's just going to benefit you, Right. Yes, well, absolutely. Very honest with ourselves here. So the, what, the, the, what I prescribe, and there's a lot of research behind this, um, and I'm not saying it's all the right, go get your own second opinion, do this how you want, but cherry pick my ideas, throw the rest away. I do not care. It makes the industry better. So if we were to look at the listing presentation or the life cycle, let's say, Brendan, there's, there's typically five or six points of maximum excitement during that transaction right? The home first gets listed. They can find it on Zillow at three in the morning. Like it's freaking exciting. Um, they get the first offer, even if it's not the offer, they get the offer. Holy crap. We got 15 K over. We're at the closing table, right? They're moved into the new house, 30 day retrospective kids are in the new school. These are all points of maximum excitement that you have the opportunity to ask for feedback. Don't ask for a review, ask for feedback, make it a conversation and allow them to talk. Brendan, I know we just got your home listed for $10,000 over. Is there anything else that we could have done better for you and your family? Just well, and David, so have you, have you heard of what, what we call the promise? Have I, have I done this script no, with you? No, tell me. Okay. So, so uh, we go to work with you as a buyer, work with you as a seller. And I'd say, you know, when we're sitting at your house, I'd go, David, you know, one of the things that's extremely important to me, David, is that throughout this transaction, you have the most exceptional real estate experience on earth. And what we're going to do is during this experience, I'm going to, and my team is going to check on you throughout the process to make sure you're having the most exceptional experience possible. Now, David, we know sometimes things might get a little crazy inspections, appraisals. Uh, there's a lot of high emotion in here. My only goal is to make sure we're checking in that we're delivering on this exceptional experience. And that when we check in with you, I need your honest feedback because that's, that's very important to us. Now, David, at the end of the transaction, when this is all said and done, we're high-fiving and we're celebrating this amazing experience that you just had. I'm going to ask you to do two things for me. Number one, I'm going to ask you if you happen to know of anyone else that we can provide the same experience to. And then number two, I'm going to ask you to give us a five-star review on whatever site you're trying to get your reviews on. Good. Right? Good. Yeah, a five-star review. Uh, and I was in with, does that sound fair? And they always look and they go, yeah, that sounds great, Brendan. Yeah, that sounds completely fair. So I've just done a mental agreement with them. That's a mental handshake. Wow. Then, like you just said, during the transaction is where this is won or lost. So when we get after past inspection, now, as you scale this, you if you have amazing transaction uh, manager, you have people, they can help engage in this, yeah. uh, what we've taught all the big teams and what we're teaching the teams. But I still see people not doing this. And I think, like you said, they get to the end and they go, 
Oh yeah. So glad we made it. Whew, that was, that was sketchy. And then they go, yeah. you know what? Yeah. But, you know, barely get on the keys. Cause you know, these transactions come down to the wire. There's always something crazy. And they're going, look, it mean a lot to my business. And this is the, the thing that makes me want to throw up. It mean a lot to my business. It, it mean the world to me. If you could give me a five-star review on Zillow. And they're like, like you just said, you, you hit it the nail on the head. They're looking at you going, I'm sorry, what? Like, yeah. like we barely closed. And now because you want more business, you want me to give you a five-star review. Yeah, right. So you're, you're right. The, the psychology mixed with the technology is fascinating. Well, and also like the, when you actually peel back the layers of the revenue potential of what reviews can do for your business, when all other factors are equal, it's, it's at the very top of the list. Yeah. You know, well, well, like, and you said they never checked in during the transaction, right? So they just let it ride. And they're like, man, if we make it to the end, this is going to be great. Like, hold like fingers so crossed. Right? It's like, like, like drive you off Niagara Falls. Like it's, yeah. uh, it's not healthy. Yeah. It's, no, I know. So, so that's huge. Okay. So, so then with reviews, then uh, as you just said, then we have to re rethink that that process and make sure that that's, is there a site that you feel above all else would be your number one focus to sure. get reviews on at this time? Yeah. So the premeditated destination is the complicated way. I, it's where are you going to throw that review? Yes. Right? When we're talking about that, let's, let's think about your headers and footers of your emails. Your, I mean, I've got a client who's got four sets of business cards, Brendan, like no kidding. Yeah. Yep. Because he's got a link to each different review venue and he rotates through every quarter. Hmm. Now he's scrubbing. That's, that's interesting. Oh, well, I'll have some, some little nuggets here in yeah. you know, the next 10 minutes that I'll, that I'll kind of help you out with. Um, so, so you need to decide where you want that review to go. Again, research. Where are you and where are you not in comparison to your competition? Guys, stop operating in a vacuum saying, oh, I'm just me. You know what I mean? Go on Google. Where, how many reviews do you have on Google? Zillow, Facebook, Yelp. Anywhere else that you choose, there's other venues, but that's usually 80% plus of the traffic is those four. What I say for Yelp is just get on the board. Like after that, don't even worry about it because they're going to pull your reviews and do all kind of weird stuff anyway, right? Oh, um, yeah. we've, we've tried. Yelp, Yelp has destroyed us. I mean, I mean, every time, and, and we have legitimate ones and they're like, no, yeah. yeah and they yeah, just yeah. throw them away. Yeah. I, I swear it's like two 13 year olds in a dark closet, like rolling dice, which one? It's, gonna that it's insane. It's yeah. insane. So, so from there, then and hi Yelp, if you're listening. So, um, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't drop my, my score, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're both going to have zeros. <laughs> hey guys. Yeah. All right, so, um, then what we're talking about is, uh, I see you laughing up there. All right. <laughs> um, Facebook, Google is really where I want to focus you, right? Because for Zillow, listen, love them. Love you Zillow if you're watching, but there's the, there's talk of maybe throttling reviews, only putting reviews if you're a Zillow preferred agent, right. make, pay, making you pay money to have data control. Yeah. Data yeah. control. Oh, right. And data, data, by the way, it, data is the most valuable resource on the face of the planet. By far. Beyond gold. Right. And so that's where the business well, agents get mad at me all the time. I go, you're in the business of data nurturing and data harvesting. And they go, wait, what? I go, that's, and, and relationship building, don't get me wrong, but they don't understand that data nurturing is relationship building. And, and I think they get this, they get so scared because they get in the industry and they go, I thought I was just going to show houses, have fun and like, you know, go to happy hours. And I'm like, no, let me show you the, let me lift up the curtain and show you what's really happening. If you want to do this at any decent level. So I'm going to invite myself for version two of this podcast because <laughs> talk about that, about the data and, and the methodologies and the tools behind how to properly nurture, you know, because you're one of the best in the business. I told you that from when we, three and a half years ago, when I sat in your conference room and you actually opened up the kimono, I looked at all of your data. We performed audits and I was like, you convert very freaking well. Right. So, and that's one of the reasons that we, I love working with you is because you practice what you preach, right? not just a bunch of talking head nonsense to get followers. Right. right. Which I, so let's go back to the review piece. So you need to have a premeditated destination of where you're going to push that review before you make the ask. Okay. So do an analysis of how many reviews you have on Google, Facebook, Zillow, Yelp, and then do the same for your two largest competitors. Right. Mm. You want to put a little bit of pressure on, you want to see where they stand and then go where you're not. So if you have two, five-star reviews on Google and they have 300 and 600, maybe focus there. And each one of them has a discrete link you can pull out from your Google business listing and use that as the link. There's also third-party tools you can use. I don't really recommend the third-party tool thing unless you're like at massive scale. Like I do have a client who does 2,200 transactions a year, zero paid leads. It's a hundred percent referral and reviews because they built their business on that and they're insanely profitable because of it. So 
Um, when we talk about that destination, have that figured out ahead of time. And then once we actually make that ask at the very end, we got to follow up on that review request as if it were a million dollar listing. Because I feel like that's, that's the little you know, pothole where we did everything right. We asked for review, they said yes, and it doesn't happen. Well, okay, so we need to make a note in our CRM. When did you ask for the review? And do you have a drip campaign for that review request to touch base 30 days later? Hey, listen, I know you're super busy. You just moved into your house. We would love to get a five-star review. And then I always come to that engagement with a little piece of value of, we would just love to invite you to our past clients and raving fans, VIP Facebook group, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then yeah, yeah. Build the tribe. Build yeah. the tribe. Right. We got to continue to. It's not just one shot, one kill. It's like, oh, I got a review. Well, done with that client, and moving on, and and it's it's over. It's yeah. completely. Over. And and I can say I'm not I'm not accusing. I'm going ding ding ding. Guilty, guilty, oh, um, super guilty, super <laughs> yeah. guilty. Yeah. There's a million things happening. A million things that happening a day. But if you leverage technology in the appropriate manner, I, you don't have to spend your brain bites there. I just right. have a stock ticker of all the stuff I have to do every single day. That's like, I spend my brain bites thinking about extremely difficult problems and talking to really cool people like you. Like, right. That's perfect. So, But we got to talk about the review response. Please. This is where a lot of people screw the pooch, right? For lack of a better term, is when, you're, when you're, you put in so much effort to ask for a review and then you actually get them to do it, right? Um, a lot of times that response come back, comes back in a very generic form. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. Love to work with you again. Like go into the CRM, pull out a granular piece of information about the transaction. That's not PII, personal identifying information or compromising RESPA. And hey, listen, Brendan, I'm so glad that we got the house of your dreams. I, I hope the kids are loving the new school. Or I'm so glad we got that six foot fence, the great days and eat your neighbor's kids, my situation, right? Like so, and because what that does is other people that are going to be rereading your reviews, i.e. people that are in my age group, sorry, you're a little bit older than me, but are the average millennial will read all of the reviews. <laughs> barely. Um, yeah, barely, barely. But, but what that looks like is when they go in and they see, my gosh, this guy is like remembering about every single transaction he's caring and he's responding in a thoughtful manner. Right. You, you humanized it. You personalized it. Right. Yeah. You, yeah, it, it's, it's, yeah, I, no, that's huge. I, I didn't think about that. I, I'm stuck in emoji world. I just heart and star everything. I'm like, <laughs> thanks. Bing. And I think just because I, I, I can't spell very well and, and it takes me a long time to type things. So, so, but no, this makes sense. Right. Cause it's not, you're not, showing everyone else, not only are you not showing the people the respect that gave you the review, but you're not showing everyone else that, hi, I'm carrying realtor of the universe. I'm, I'm special. I'm nice. Yeah. Right. And if, gotcha. if, if you do that, if you put in a, an extra five minutes of effort for every transaction, just to do the review piece, the, the long-term value of that action will, will far outweigh almost every other action in your business model. And we can prove it. We can actually tie back the revenue stream to review cultivation efforts and the money and time you spend there versus cultivating Google leads that, you know, or Mickey Mouse 555. Well, in, in talking about the Google leads, so on back to the Google business page review system. So I have people telling me all the time that there's this race for Google reviews. And if you don't have 400, 600, 900 soon and very soon, you won't really matter. Thoughts to that. Not matter, but... Google's looking at this. And so if I go have my grandma, everyone, you know, cause all these agents are like, let's do a Google uh, uh, business page review exchange. Right. And I go on there and I go, you're a great real owner, blah, blah, blah. And I just, you know, we do this. Is that helping? Does that matter? Should I be doing that? Yeah. It's not hurting. Right. But is it, right does that, it matter? Right? Ethically? No. Right. Okay. But like truly you should be treating all of your clients with a paramount amount of respect and getting hundred percent of them to give you a five-star review. Sure. Now, when we talk about the, the algorithm and how your organic ranking is impacted by your GMB, yeah, absolutely. Your number of reviews, how you respond to those reviews, and how fast you respond to those reviews matters for your organic, right? This is all public information. You can find this in, in various websites and research articles. So yes, it matters. But, but I'm, a new, I'm a new agent. I've never sold a house. Yeah. Should I go and have everyone in my family drop me a Google business page review just saying I'm a good guy? Not, not I, saying I'm a great real estate agent, that I'm just I, a good guy. David Tam would advise against that. Okay. okay. We're going to leave it there. Interesting. However, your, your website, what I can conclusively tell you is that your website user experience, speed of your website, traffic to your website, authority score of your website are far more important than the number of reviews. Okay. Because Google is smart. Okay. 
and they're the, one of the richest companies on the planet and they want to continue making money off of you. If they allow you to gamify the system and go ask your Chinese food delivery guy for 15 five-star reviews, it skews the system. Well, that's right? why they made this move to Google screen and Google guaranteed is they go, why have a middleman? Why don't we just get rid of Zillow and give it direct to the source and make a little money while doing it? Yeah. And, and so, so Google screened then is the future. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> it has a crystal ball. It's opaque at this point. Um, I would say there's going to be a mass consolidation in the real estate space. And Google is going to be a big part of that with Google screen. Okay. My estimation, this is again, David Tam is 25% of the real estate agents are going to be out of business in the next 36 months. Oh, well, for sure. Right? Absolutely. The average real estate agent does one less than one transaction a month. They do 10, yes. according to NARN last November, they do 10 transactions a year. Those are all going away. Bye-bye. So what are we going to do with that remaining 25%, right? It's going to be, have to be spread out against the top performers and the billion dollar companies because yeah. those are going to be the only players, right? You might have some boutique weirdness in the middle of, Hey, we're the, right. Yeah. Um, we're, we're in Vail and we, we own the Vail space or whatever. Yes, exactly. That niche. Uh, yeah. It's important. Yes. Honor the threat, but do not rely entirely your business model on it. Just yeah. like I'm having conversations today with people that are like, you know, I spend $60,000 a month on Zillow leads and I can't get off. I'm hooked like a heroin addict. Oh, I, I, everyone I coach across the country, it's a big conversation. Um, that That's a big piece of it is, is how to stop buying and start generating. Right. And then uh, I think, and, and again, for version part two of this is I'd love to come back and also, you know, hit, you know we keep hearing video, video, video yeah. and, yeah. and, and just maximizing that. But to, to close this out, and again, I can't thank you enough, and I think everyone uh, provided or received so much value from this, just to put a, a, a bow on this Google, Google business page, because there, I talk about the Google business page a lot, David, because it's one of the things that if I'm, so here's another stat to your stat, 25% are going to be out of the business. There's only 3% of all agents out of 1.3 million in the, in the United States right now that sell more than 25 homes a year. And the reason I bring that up is it could take someone three years, four years to get 50 reviews if it was just from their own clients buying or selling a house. So if I'm new, and again, there's a lot of new agents I work with and not even new, uh, two years in, let's say three years in sometimes, right? And then I, of course, have mega teams that I work with. With this, that, you know, which is the majority of agents, right? As we know the majority of agents do five to seven deals a year. Unfortunately, that's just it's the sadness of our, our industry. What, what should I be doing with my Google business page? Should I be trying to get grandma to give a review? Should I be uploading photos into it? Should I, what, what can I tell Google to make me more famous faster? Yeah. Cause most people don't even own their first page of their name. No, definitely not at all. You'd be shocked how many URLs I own of other people. It's insane. It's right? insane. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, I, listen, I'm going to have to, as, as a marketing professional, urge against going to grandma and getting okay. her. It's just all not right. a practice and the algorithms can pick up on that stuff. I mean, all the way down to IP tracing. Mm. Of, uh, you guys are next of Ken. Like it's, it's at that level now of the, wow. I'm not saying that's happening in every case, but I have seen review but processes. This is good to know because they're probably saving us some time, right? Well, We're just yeah, trying to. Well, but it's, I do have a single agent client of mine that has 865 star reviews because he just went completely bananas and every single person he interacts with, you know, hands a business card and a little $5 bill tucked underneath, right? Yeah. Run a contest or do, Hey, I'm trying to really, you know, you know, call in and if we get to, yes. So, okay. So, so, okay. So does that work? Should I do that? I would not recommend that. Okay. Gotcha. I, would not I cannot in good faith recommend that. I would Perfect. say if you honor the threat though, and attack feedback cultivation with the advice that we have given on this. And then we can give more advice after this. Doing that will be more than 95% of the real estate professionals out there Love who it. have the tail end of the transaction. Okay. So takeaways are number one, get your own website or at very minimum, a squeeze page or landing page, seller yeah. specific. And I think that's a huge, huge piece and, and to make sure people are crystal clear on. Okay. Then obviously the, the CRM, and, and we, we will take another dive into that next time and, and best practices for lead follow-up. And I know you score ours and it's helped me a lot realizing that I didn't do right. certain things fast enough, right enough, you know, correct right. enough. Right. Um, so don't ask your grandma for Google reviews. It's probably not that important. And they're going to figure it out anyway, at some <laughs> point, which, so everyone I coached out there to do that, my bad, I was wrong. Don't do that anymore. Um, and then, uh, 
I think, yeah, I think we covered quite a bit. Is there anything else you'd like to, to mention before we say goodbye? You can, if you want to know more information about this stuff, you can go to cast.services, right? Um, at the yeah, end, and we'll have all of your stuff yeah. shared and posted everywhere for sure. Yeah, um, but at the end of the day, no, I, I think we, we encapsulated a lot of that. What I would really like to do is for your audience to ask questions of what are the pain points that they're experiencing? What are the questions that they have from today's session to build the roadmap for the next session? Because I want to make sure that I'm providing enough value to you um, and your organization through that effort, okay? No, this was fantastic. Well, again, David Tam, Cast Services, we'll have all his information on the YouTube, on the podcast, everywhere shared. And then again, can't wait to have him back. Thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, until next time. Yeah, it's good to see your face, buddy. Absolutely. <laughs>